I watched every single on-demand course that you offered. Um, the live, the live lectures, I would watch them every Saturday morning, every Sunday morning. But not only that, if I didn't understand something, I would go back through them and watch exactly what I didn't understand for sure. I pretty much finished an hour early, but I used all my time to check over everything. There was a few flag questions that I spent last few hours looking at, but I pretty much finished an hour. Early. And you did the easy ones first and the more difficult ones at the end, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a winning formula. Level one is that, okay, give me the equation. I'm going to massage it. I'm going to manipulate it and give you the unknown, right? That's level one. Probably works 80, 70% of the time for FE. Okay, I'm not saying FE is easy, by the way. FE is difficult in its own sense. Level two is where you're sort of able to cross reference, cross pollinate, connect some of the dots. And level three is the type of question where you read it and you're not even sure, like, how to approach it. And like, what was your approach? What was the mindset shift for the last three, four months? Really? You, your course covers everything from the base up and it covers every possible scenario in my mind that could show up on the exam. Hi, John. Hi, Wasim. Good morning. Morning. Happy New Year to you and uh, a wonderful way to start the year, right? By passing your PE. In fact, did you pass your PE end of December or in January? December 19th, I took the exam. But you got the results in January because of Christmas? January 3rd because of Christmas. Okay, nice, nice. It would be good to actually get the results before the end of the or around the end of the year so that you can sort of chill out a little bit more on New Year, right? That would have been nice. That would have been nice. Yes, but uh, better late than never. So congratulations, it's a great achievement. Now, John, um, if you could walk me through your journey, let's start with when you graduated, when you took the FE and your P power journey more specifically. Yeah, so I graduated with my bachelor's in 2017 with my master's in 2018. Started working at a power company in 2018 and started studying for the FE um, late summer of 2022 using your study guide and the NCES practice exam. And I passed that in late July of 2022 with FE. Okay. Mm -hmm. Started okay. studying for the PE early 2023. I uh, used your study guide, the NCES practice exam, and I took it in September. I, the first time I studied for roughly eight months and I understand the sentiment of not wanting to take a course because that's how I felt at first, but I just couldn't organize my studying. It, it wasn't a good idea to rely solely on myself because I focused way too much on the practice exam. No single practice exam can have every, can cover every subject that needs to be covered. And for that reason, I just neglected some key areas and I kind of set myself up for failure that way. So my, my stubbornness, you know, led me to failing it for the first time in September and that was the first go around. Right. And then uh, I think you had posted on Reddit, you were asking people about some advice and that's how I sort of connected with you at that time because you had mentioned my book and then um, uh, we interacted and I told you how the course can help you, right? And don't get me wrong, my intention was not to sell my course, right? It was just to figure out where the gaps could be. And the gaps when it comes to the P power, now, having passed the exam after that attempt, you know that a lot of those are between the lines, right? The conceptual stuff, the subtle stuff, what I call like level three understanding. You've gone through my life training programs as well, right? Level one is that, okay, give me the equation. I'm going to massage it. I'm going to manipulate it and give you the unknown, right? That's level one. Probably works 80, 70% of the time for FE, okay? I'm not saying FE is easy, by the way. FE is difficult in its own sense. Level two is where you're sort of able to cross reference, cross pollinate, connect some of the dots. And level three is the type of question where you read it and you're not even sure like how to approach it. And PE is riddled. It's full of those type of problems, right? So what helped you go from, so get to level three understanding? Like what was your approach? What was the mindset shift over the last three, four months? You, your course covers everything from the base up. And it covers every possible scenario in my mind that could show up on the exam. Really just mastering every single quiz, every single mini exam, every single practice test, 
and all the homework problems in your study guide, just having those questions thrown at you and being able to do them without any help. Once you're at that point, you have such an important base knowledge there and you could pretty much handle any question in PE power once you're at that point. So I, I mean, it's not easy, but you have to get to your, you have to get yourself to that point before you can handle the level three. So, but, but again, John, uh, just doing the problems, I don't think they're going to get it. And I don't think that's your point, right? Uh, there are tons of practice problems, right? Even if you're not in my program or not using my resources, P power exam is one of those exams that there's a lot of third party material as well you can prepare for, but what helped you get to that level three understanding where you are understand you're looking at a question and visualizing what's going on and really connecting those dots how did you approach that was it just doing a bunch of practice problems or you invested some extra time and effort in understanding the underlying concepts as well oh for sure the concepts um i watched every single on-demand course that you offered um the live the live lectures I would watch them every Saturday morning, every Sunday morning. But not only that, if I didn't understand something, I would go back through them and watch exactly what I didn't understand. Those conceptual parts in the beginning, you like to go over those for, I know, for 60% of the live lecture because it's it's the most important to get the concepts down. And uh, that's where I would go back whenever I was confused. I had those readily accessible to just go back and answer any questions I had. So <clears throat> really, I just... The, the live lectures are very important for me to get my fundamental understanding down. Right. And I think you participated in pretty much every single live class live. Now I had multiple Johns in my program in the September to November. So I don't know who, who was attending, who was not, but I think you had uh, been pretty active. I'm looking at my inbox and we have 27, uh, 28 uh, chains of emails, not emails, but chains of emails. So I know you were very active throughout your process as well and preparation but uh, were you attending them live mostly or just watching the recording or combination of both? I would say I attended 75% of the lectures live, okay. but I watched 100% of the live lectures in the end multiple times. Right. Good. And how did the practice exams come into play? The computer simulated practice exam that I have and the NCS sample exam that uh, comes from NCS directly. How did you utilize those? First, I'll say your practice exams are very good. Um, if someone doesn't have them, they're missing out. The first exam I got roughly a 79%. Um, okay. I know that was considered the easier one of the two. The second one, I believe I got about 70%. Right. Yeah. Um, they're How hard. The one. Yeah. I think an exam is difficult. Yeah. I put in about six hours into each of them in total. I split them up. I did the first half and I waited like a day. I did the second half for, for each of them. Right. Um, those really helped my understanding of rotating machine induction and synchronous machines very well. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I didn't have many questions about that subject and that was huge for me. So, yeah. And that's a kind of tricky section, you know, because it, ha it is full of equations and then us engineers, we tend to be a little bit more comfortable when we have a lot of mathematical stuff to deal with. This numerical things tend to seem easy, but then, um, if again, if you just rely on equations, which is a level one understanding, I don't think that anyone can go too far in this exam. So that's uh, it's good that you were sort of taking a deep dive into topics, right? Now, fast forward to your actual exam. How what was your level of confidence in exam number two versus exam number one? That is the one that you took in September and the one that you took in December. I will say failing destroys your confidence. So right even if I was the most confident person in the world going in the second time, I still had that failure on my mind, right. but I was in the mindset of just attacking the exam. So it was good that I was in that mindset. Also, the first time I took the exam, I drank coffee. I don't recommend you do that. It makes you yeah. a little more angry. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have any coffee. Um, I, was in, I was in a good mindset and it's a mental marathon. That's the best way I can describe it. You have to just stay mentally strong through every question and you, and I know the way you explained it was take every question that you do well as a victory to move on to give you confidence for the next one. You have to do that. And you can't, you can't give up easily for sure. And how early did you leave the exam the second time around? I pretty much finished an hour early, but I used all my time to check over everything. Um, right. 
Right. There was a few flag questions that I spent last few hours looking at, but I pretty much finished an hour early. Right. And you did the easy ones first and the more difficult ones at the end, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a winning formula. And my opinion is the first half is the harder half, but people will have different opinions. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not as clear cut in PE as it is in FE because in FE, you clearly know that up until electronics, roughly the first half is going to be right. And then from electronics onwards, the second half starts, whereas in PE, you know, there's no rhyme or reason for them not to sort of test you on everything in each half. Right. So it doesn't sequentially stop at circuits. Right. Uh, you can probably see some stuff from three and four potentially in first half and vice versa. So that's good. So job well done, John. And now you have the monkey off your back, right? So congratulations. You can add PE to your last name and, you know, see your in inbox flooded with opportunities on LinkedIn, right? Recruiters reaching out to you. So that's a great feeling, right? All of a sudden, by adding two names, uh, two letters at the end of your last name uh, changes things so drastically, right? Are you experiencing that? Um, there's been an uptick, I'd say. <laughs> right, right. I mean, the market has been hot. So even without PEs, uh, if you oh, have yeah, the right yeah. skill set, even if you have the right skill, just the right skill set, that uh, will attract a lot of opportunities. But definitely having the credential in the short term, medium term, and long term, it's going to pay a lot of dividends to you. So it was great having you in the class, John. As you said, 75% of the time you were there, active participation, you know, throughout the process. And um, I, I am glad that you got this done within a relatively short time. And best of luck with your future career endeavors. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks. If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section of this video below. You can find tons of stories of my FE Electrical and P Power students over here. And if you want to learn more about preparation of these exams, then click here to learn more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video.